Hey guys, welcome back to the Wallen Homestead. This is podcast episode 101. Today is August 29th, 2021. It's Sunday and it is 79 degrees out. So it looks like it's supposed to get up to 90 today. Um, it is 10.36 in the morning. So I thought, um, I'm upstairs. So I thought if I get this done early in the morning, it's probably not gonna be too hot. So <laughs> it's a little warm up here, but it's fine. I think I'm gonna be just fine, so. Um, my name is Tiffany, and you can find me on Instagram as The Woolen Homestead. We have an email for the podcast. If you have any questions about anything, it's thewoolenhomestead at gmail.com. We also have a P.O. box in the drop down um, if you want to send any snail mail, postcards, anything like that. And let's see. So, for an overview of the podcast this week, I have no finished objects. Um, I have a couple works in progress and a new cast on and a couple acquisitions and a little bit of life stuff at the end. So for my first work in progress, I'm going to show you the socks that I started for Ethan. First of all, I need to show off this bag because I adore it. It is from Random Fandom Bags and it says my favorite color is October on it. And it's just a really nice little drawstring with a handle. And then on the back, it's quilted. So cute. I love this. We had done a swap because one of um, our old colorways that we used to dye was my favorite color is October. So we did a, a bag swap <laughs> for some yarn. So that was really fun. So what I've got going here, I did have a little bit of a hiccup with this project. Um, I originally was doing the Wool Ease Basic Socks. Um, and let's see, that was by. Well, I, you know what? I don't think it had on there who it was by, I don't think. But it's a free pattern. If you just search in Google, you can find it. And I had knit Ethan a pair of socks with that pattern before, and it went great. So I'm not sure if maybe the version that I was looking at was maybe an outdated version or. Or what because I did it before it was fine but this time um, these were way too small I just had him close his eyes and I put the sock on him and because I didn't think it was gonna fit I had gotten all the way down to the heel turn I was on the gusset decreases of the first sock and it was not gonna fit so I restarted it I only had to rip back to the cuff which was nice so what I ended up doing is finding the rye pattern by tin can knits that's also a free pattern for a worsted weight sock which is what this is and um the other pattern the woolies basic socks had me using a size us3 for the whole thing and on the rye pattern it has you use a three for the cuff and then for the body what is it size five so you switch to a size five. So I just ripped back to the cuff since that was all done. And it was the same stitch count, 48 stitches. So I'm hoping this will work a little better. I'm gonna get past the heel, try it on them again. See if I can get it to work. I'm just really confused because I had done the other ones before. I must have switched to a different needle size before because three just seemed so small because I had done that for my DK socks as well. And those were perfect. So yeah, it just seemed weird. So I think I missed something. <laughs> but um, I wanted to show off the progress keeper I've got on here. It says Team Cuff Down, and that's from the Crazy Sock Ladies um, shop, which she now has her own website. So you gotta go check it out. She was on Etsy, but she's crazysockladyco.com. She's got all her goodies on there. She's got yarn in there now. So cool. So, yeah, I love that. I am definitely Team Cuff Down. I've done a few toe up, but I just prefer Cuff Down. So yeah, so it's the same stitch count. Like I said, it's 48 stitches all the way around worsted weight yarn. This is Patton's Classic Worsted. Let's see if I have the colorway. It's just like a gray and white marl. Dark gray marl is the name. So yeah, I'm excited about this. He had been asking for some thicker socks for his boots for hunting. And so... I think this will be great and these are gonna go so quick his birthday's in October I knit him a pair of socks every year so that'll be fun so I've got some time to get that done it's been super nice to just 
whiz through those because with it being worsted way, it just goes so fast. So, yeah, so I'm, I think that's gonna work out much better. I'm liking that, st um, or that gauge with those larger needles. Let's see if it fits them. Okay. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention. The rye pattern has texture on it. I'm not doing the texture on there. It's just got like little garter ridge on it. Um, I'm just was more looking for the numbers for this for a plain sock. So basically, I'm kind of doing both. I just took the needle size and stitch count from that and the Woolies basic socks. Um, I still want to do a heel flap and gusset, which I believe is in the rye pattern as well. So I'll either use the stitch count from that or from um, or like the heel pattern from that or from the other one. So they're the same same count so yeah I think that's all I wanted to say about that it's the size large that was the only other thing and yeah so restarting it wasn't really that bad it was not what I wanted to do because I was already into the gusset decreases on the first sock but um I'm so glad I checked them because it just didn't feel right I was like uh I don't want to get these all the way done and then have not be able to wear them so next what I want to show is my slip stravaganza shawl by Stephen West. This was the mystery knit along from last year. He does a mystery knit along every single year and he just put a post about the next one. I know on the last episode I was saying, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. I don't know. I'm probably going to do it. <laughs> I am a little burnt out on this project, but not because I don't like it. I just, I want it. I'm ready for the finished product so bad. I love it. And, um, and I'm almost done. Kind of. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'll show you where I'm at. I actually managed to stop at the end of a row so I can show you guys a little bit better. I did put it back onto like a 40 inch cable. Maybe this is a 60. I think this might be a 60. But, um, I had originally had like a, an extender on it and that I just kept getting stuck on it. So I just took that off. But so I could have shown probably better on that one, but oh, and I did get a request to show more of the shawl. So I am sorry about that, that I, I tend to do that where I just like flash it real quick and then put it away. So I want to show you guys in detail how far I'm almost done. So let's see. So this is the first section right here where these honeycombs are and kind of see how that'll look once it's blacked out. The second section it's this really neat just it's all slip stitches this was super relaxing that's the next section this mm -hmm. section took me forever but I love how it looks oh it's so pretty so see see this is gonna just grow so much when it's blacked out and it's really hard to show but that is that section and then this one was super quick when I got my progress keeper and that is from Lindsay at Simply Serving. It's a little pet rock on a book. <laughs> I just love his little pink cheeks. So cute. And then last but not least, well second to last, <laughs> were these little triangles. These were fun. These were super quick. I liked that too. And then I love the look of these chevrons. This is the last section. So if you happen to catch my Instagram post and stories, I am in a bit of a dilemma. These three garter ridges here, or like garter stripes, I guess, um, you have the option of stopping for a smaller shawl, smaller, I put that in quotes because it's still huge. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. Um, you can stop for the smaller version after this stripe and bind off. Or for the larger version, you can do these three stripes again and then bind off. So my dilemma is I want to be done because <laughs> I'd like to have a little bit of a break in between the next one. Um, which most likely starts at the beginning of October. That's usually when they always start. Um, and <laughs> it's 
So that way if I bind off after that, I'll have a little bit more of a break. Um, however, I love the look of the bigger one. And I think that's what I need to do. I just love it. <laughs> I love the look of the smaller one too, but I love the bigger one. So I think that's my answer. And that's what a lot of you guys said on Instagram as well, was to do with the larger. It just means it's going to take a little longer. And you know what? That's okay. <laughs> I need to quit making such a big deal out of it because it's okay. <laughs> so in, my goal is to have it done before the next one. And if it's not, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. I know that if I do the bigger one, I'm not going to be upset that it's huge. And I know if I do the smaller one, I still will probably be happy with the size, but I still think I will have wished I did the bigger one. So I think that's my answer. I think I finally came up with a decision. <laughs> but I'll show this one more time just where it's all bunched up. It's so pretty. I really love it. And I think that's why I've decided I am going to do the next one because very rarely do I not like the look of them. Every once in a while I see the ones, you know, from the past. I'm like, mm, I don't really care for that one. So if I'm starting on the next one and I don't love, because I never keep up with it. I always, <laughs> I can't keep up with the knit along at all. I don't know how people get these things done in a month. It's just taken me a whole year. <laughs> Granted, it was in hibernation for a good, like, six months. But, um, yeah. <laughs> I, so by the time I see the, the spoilers, I can then kind of decide, okay, no, I don't think I need to finish it. Usually I'm still in clue one by the time the knit along ends. <laughs> so I won't have put a ton of work into it, but um, it's just fun. It's so fun. It's really neat, you know, getting a clue each week and just seeing what happens. So yeah, I think I made my decision. So um, the needle sizes, Oh, I didn't write that down. It's just whatever is in the pattern. I don't think it's on my needles right now either. I want to say it's a size 8, but that might be too much too. I can't remember. Um, and the yarns are... I'll show you... I'll show them in the cake because it's going to be a little easier, I think. So this is Tiny Dancer. This was one of our old colorways. My husband and I used to dye yarn if you're new here. This is Orchid, another one of our old colorways. And this is Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light. And this is Pop Rocks. And there's this which is Alpaca with a Twist, Socrates is the yarn line, and the colorway is Raspberry Gelato. So that was fun. So the other, my other part of my decision is I have plenty of yarn to do the big border too. So that was another deciding factor. If I was running out, then I obviously wouldn't. But um, yeah, so very, very happy with that. I love it. It's gonna be ginormous. I cannot wait very excited so that is that next next is my new cast on I'm really excited about this <laughs> so in an effort to not go crazy from that shawl because <laughs> I don't I know I've mentioned this on Instagram but it's over 900 stitches it's like 900 and 30 something right now so it's just oh, each row is like over a half hour long to do so that's why I'm feeling the burnout but um in an effort to kind of not feel burnt out instead of stopping and going working on other projects I cast on a whole new one <laughs> I'm not even upset so this is the Ninilchik Swancho and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right I've also heard Ninilchik too, so I just know it's somewhere in Alaska. Um, it's by Caitlin Hunter, and I just cast this on yesterday. But I got the 
um, neck done and then I just did this tiny little bit of color work here and I'm on the short row shaping and I am doing this this is written for DK I'm doing this in worsted weight because I have so much worsted weight yarn I have so much and my thought was I could use Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool because it's very cost effective I have I had almost a whole they're like big skeins. I almost had a whole skein of that and then like half of one. And their dye lots are pretty similar as far as I think. And um, cause I don't even know, this might just be natural. I don't know if it's dyed, but I think they do have lots of it. But so my thought was if I run out, I can run over to Joanne's or Michael's, grab another skein to finish it up. Um, however, I have a ton of like one skein, maybe two skein, worsted weights um so I never had enough for like a full sweater I have a lot that I could just do like color work and this swancho is which a swancho is a sweater poncho um I think I've got a picture on my phone but it's all over color weight or color work so that is the pattern and I would like mine to be just a little bit more oversized than that so like I said it's written in DK I'm doing mine in worsted. I did check my gauge. I did a really quick gauge swatch. I did not wash it. I did not do the full like amount of rows and then some to get a good gauge swatch. So it was kind of a quicker one, but I was close enough. I was, it called for 20 stitches. I was at 19 and I'd rather have it be a little bit too big than too small. So, and I'm doing the second size, which is the large to three X size. It's the number two. And so I think it's going to be perfect. I really like the fabric that I'm getting with it too. So I just kept the same needle size. Um, and I'm just doing it with worsted weight. And then my plan was to use a lot of my, my random colors that I have. Because I just have so many random colors. And my thought was like a fall palette. And then I don't really have to worry about running out of yarn because I can just switch it out to another color. So I kind of narrowed it down to a couple different colors and then within those colors I have different variations. And so one of them is this tweed. It's like a creamy tweed. And this is actually an acrylic wool blend. This was, I love this yarn. This is, um, it was a Downton Abbey yarn. <laughs> And it's so fun. I love this. I think this was the Matthew colorway, but I just love it. And I was like, that would be great in this sweater. Cause I, like I said, I want it to be really fall, um, really cozy. Something that I can also wear in the winter that it doesn't, you know, it's not just fall. Um, and then there's this really pretty red that I have. This is Harrisville, uh, Highland wool. I love this one. It's so wooly. So that's the red that I've already got in there. Then I've got this really pretty dark green. And I love this. And I thought this was going to be so cool. I'm just trying to... It's going to look very Christmassy if these two are together, which I kind of like. But I also want it to be really folly too and you know, I feel like this is kind of also like lodgy, like cabin type look to it too, but I might try to keep these just a little bit, like not in the same color work portion. They'll just both be in there, but not together. Um, and within that green, I've got the variations of like some blue greens. So I've got this one, which is Patton's Worsted. This is the Jade Heather colorway. And then I've got this one. This is also, so that dark green and this green are a mystery yarn. Um, when I was given yarn from Caitlin, when she moved to Texas, um, she's Mint Rain hand dyed yarns. She had given me just a bunch of yarn and there was just some lovely, lovely worsted weight in there. Um, there's just no band with this one, but oh, it's so pretty. It's a single ply. I think that's gonna be really pretty in there too. And then I've got kind of along with the red um, is this orange, burnt orange that I used in my um, 
Fjord Volgenser, the ones with the paw prints on it. And I don't have a ton of this. I have this and just like another little ball. Um, and then I've also got this to kind of go with that as well. So this is Sunburst Gold from um, Nature Spun. So yeah, I'm kind of all using those together. Um, and I've also got, this is another backup. This is just some random yarn that I spun. Um, this doesn't, I don't even know what type of wool this is. This is just some practice wool that I had. And I just spun it up. <laughs> it's a little scratchy-ish, but I don't mind. But I might not even need to get into this one, so. Um... Yeah, and then I have another Lamb's Pride Worsted. This is a single as well. I love this yarn. It's a nice gray, like a heather gray. And the color is gray heather. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so lots of, lots of variations that I can do. I think my plan, I think, we'll see. I think my plan will be, like, Anytime there's a color work section, that'll just be a different color. Like, it's not going to be, like, contrast color one, two, and three is always the same. I think that's how I'm going to go about it. Um, but maybe within each chart, each contrast color in that will be its own color. I think that's how I'm going to do it. So, yeah, that is the plan. Oh, I'm so excited. I've been wanting to do this one forever. And then I just kind of had a moment of weakness and was like, I'm going to cast it on right now. <laughs> I'm just going to do it. Also, thank you to Tanya. Um, she, on Instagram, she was helping me decide what colors because I was having a crisis picking up my colors. <laughs> so I kind of showed her some different options that I had and she gave me lots of good tips. So thank you, Tanya. That was very, very helpful. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, and the needle sizes for that are size four and six. So it's four on the um, neck, neck band. And I'm assuming probably the arms, but I didn't, I haven't looked that far yet. And then size six for the body. So that is it for my works in progress. I'm now going to talk about my acquisitions. Show you guys a little couple of things that I got this week. So this last week, I got to meet up with my aunt and my mom. And we got together and um, we were overdue for a gift exchange from um, birthdays and Christmas. So we um, got together and did that. So some of the things that my, my aunt gifted me um, is some red work supplies. So I have been wanting to do this. It's Laura Ingalls. Um, it's a quilt and it's got red work and then quilting in it and it's so pretty um, my aunt had sent me the pattern a couple years ago and I just have never done it and I really really want to so she gave me some she gave me some um, floss so there's the blue too just in case I wanted to do blue but I think I'm gonna do the red and then she gave me some muslin which I did not have so now I'm really excited um, to get the pattern printed for that to trace out um, the embroidery on here and to do that because I really do enjoy it um, and then some of the patterns that she gave me these are some other patterns but I, I think I'm going to start with the Laura one this one's going to be really hard to see yeah that's not going to be seen at all but it is um, it's what it says on it it says I woke and found that life was duty but it's very 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 pretty it's got flowers all over it. it's got a lady sweeping looks like maybe like turn of the century clothes like 1900s um it's really really pretty it says it was done by um rosie o young of stanton michigan it says this piece was found in the old family trunk that's really cool that is really, really cool. That's really neat. Um, it's like this is just a picture. There's no pattern with this one, but that's some an example of some red work. She gave me this book. And just 
this book as well. Oh, and then she also, this is not Red Work related. This is a magazine that she gave me. Um, this is called In Her Studio, Spaces and Stores of Creative Women. It's really cute. And it's a really, like, thick, and, like, nice, heavy, um, heavy magazine. But it's just got, this is some, this has some yarn, but some of them are even um, more colorful than that. It's really pretty. This one. So yeah, that's really fun. That'll be really nice to flip through. I love the cover too. That's nice. So yeah, that was really sweet. Um, she also she also gifted me this really really awesome yarn bag, <laughs> and then in it yarn so she gave me a couple skeins that she had she had um, two skeins of cascade 220 it's really pretty pastels and then just some leftover cream that she had it's so pretty that would be really pretty in a color work project together I love this I love this bag I just think this is too cute so she um, did a lot of craft shows. She goes to a lot of um, antique shops and things like that. So she kind of picked this stuff up along the way. So I love that. She also gave me this bag. One of my gifts was in here. And so I started using this for my um, Swancho. It's just a little reusable bag. And so spring is in the air. So that was cute. That was a lot of fun. Getting together with them and just catching up. So, let's see, life stuff, we're going to life stuff. I have the weekend off, so this was nice. Um, it's kind of bittersweet. We were um, supposed to get together um, at my mom's this weekend, my uh, family and I, but just kind of got a little bit away from us that um, it's gonna be the upper 90s, so we were all a little worried about it being a little too hot. And then um, also my brother, this weekend, I believe, I think, actually probably over the next couple of days, I think it's, um, it might be next weekend that the graduation is, but he is going to go see um, his son, my nephew, out in California because he is going to be graduating as a Marine. So that is really cool. Um, really really proud of him I guess he just I don't know a ton about the Marines if I'm being completely honest but he just finished um, crucible and I guess that's like a really I was reading about what my um, sister-in-law was posting about that's a really intense um, thing that they have to go through and I believe it's at the end um, after they make it through that they can graduate I believe don't quote me on that if you do know please correct me if I'm wrong um, also, Benny just came up here, so if you hear snuffles, that's why. <laughs> Hi, buddy. You can get up. Get up. There we go. So he's up on the futon now. <laughs> um, so yeah, super proud of my nephew, Colton. I just think that's amazing, and I'm so proud of him. Um, but yeah, he should be graduating, um, I believe, on the 3rd. So yeah, so it just kind of... We just said, why don't we just reschedule? So we're probably going to get together maybe September or October when it's a little bit cooler out. <laughs> um, let's see. So yeah, so like I said, the, the the silver lining is I now got the weekend off, which was really nice. It was really nice to just kind of relax. Um, Ethan's sleeping right now, so I'm just up here uh, recording this. But um, he's been still working overnights. <laughs> Another big thing that's been going on is um, Ethan and I have really, really started making a commitment to working out and eating right and tracking our calories and all of that. And that has made a huge difference. Oh my gosh. My mental health on top of it has been wonderful. Um, we kind of really, really started like a big commitment to it at the beginning of the month and so it's been about three weeks and I've lost 13 pounds which was so exciting 
Um, we've been working out every single day. I at least do cardio every day, 20 to 30 minutes, um, just on like our stationary bike or whatever I do. Um, and then every other day I weight lift every other day. He, he, he is actually a personal trainer. Um, like he's certified. He doesn't do it as a job, but he is a certified personal trainer. So he, um, had made up a program for me, like a full body workout, um, from a couple of years ago. And I still had that. So I've started doing that just to get going. Um, but he actually lifts every other day and works on, or he works, he lifts every day and works on, um, like certain muscle groups every day where I'm doing like a full body workout every day. And, um, I think he does like one rest day or something. I'm not sure he, he has that all figured out, but, um, but we make, um, we definitely make sure to get in our, our cardio every day. So that has made just a huge difference on just everything. Um, it's made a huge difference for my job. I'm a dog groomer. And so I'm lifting dogs. I'm bending over, you know, getting down, standing up, just keeping dogs on the table. If they're getting a little O'Reilly, you know, things like that, where, um, in the past it would just kill my body and I would just be exhausted. Well, the other day, actually it was Friday. I did one of my, one of my favorite clients. I've, I've groomed him for probably seven years. Well, there was a little bit of a break when I, um, moved salons. Um, because I was in the Mount Pleasant salon, now I'm in the Midland one for the past six years. Um, but I started with him in Mount Pleasant and then um, once I moved, he didn't come for maybe a couple of years and stayed in Mount Pleasant and now he's back in Midland with me. But he's a St. Bernard and he's like 120 pounds. <laughs> and I groomed him on Friday and I did not feel nearly as whipped as I usually do afterwards. The only thing that I did wrong <laughs> is when I helped to lift him up into her car afterwards, um, I didn't have, I think I just did get a good enough like stance or I'm not sure what I did, but when we went to lift him up, he, we didn't, couldn't get him up. And so he just kind of came back down, like just stepped back down off the back of the truck he didn't fall or anything. He just stepped back down. And I think in the process of doing that, I think I kind of twisted and I just reacted, you know, and my just kind of strained my back a little bit, but, um, now it's fine. It was a little sore yesterday. Now it's fine. So, um, other than that, <laughs> before that, <laughs> um, you know, I was, I was recovering much better. So that's been really cool. Um, I feel like I have more energy. Like I said, we've changed our eating habits. So, um, I like the app, my fitness pal. That is what I have used for a decade. And whenever I do go back into, okay, I'm going to track my calories. That has always worked the best for me. Um, I had done weight watchers for a little bit, um, a couple of years ago, and that was really nice too. You also track your calories as well. Um, but what I, what I liked about weight watchers and what I learned from that was it taught me what to eat and how to eat properly. I wasn't really good at that. I would, didn't really understand, you know, like balance when you're eating and that's how that's going to affect you. So, um, but just tracking my calories has been great. Um, the app has like a scanner on it so you could just scan in the food. Um, and then to weigh it out instead of you know, taking a cup and measuring it out like that, or taking a tablespoon and measuring it out like that. What we do is we have a big kitchen scale, digital scale, and you just put your plate on it, you tear it out, and then you just weigh it. And then when you weigh out the grams, usually we would do like a serving size of whatever it is, which it tells you on your nutrition facts what that amount is in grams. And then if it's different than the serving size, you can just go into that food on the app, and you can pick one gram as the serving amount or as the, um, let's see, I don't remember what they call it. You just pick one gram and then under serving size, you can pick how many grams you did. So I would type, say it was 35 grams of whatever, but the serving size is, is 28. Then I would go in, hit one gram and then type in 
30, 35 or whatever I said. So that's made a huge difference um, than having to like, okay, I'm going to do a cup and a half of this or whatever. Um, so that tracking has been so helpful. So helpful because then you don't have the stress of, oh, I shouldn't eat this. Oh, can I eat this? I don't know. I probably shouldn't. And, you know, things like that. It also shows you um, your macros. So your protein, your carbs, and your fat, how much of that you've had. And it shows you on a pie, like a pie graph. And so if I look and it's dinner time and I notice I'm really low on my protein, which is usually my problem. I'm usually great at getting my carbs in, but I have a hard time with my protein. And um, so then I know, okay, I need to focus on maybe adding some more protein to my dinner. But what I've been trying to do is get it pretty balanced for each meal. Cause that, I notice when I do that, I feel the best. <laughs> I it, My food lasts longer, it feels like. Um, yeah, it's just, it's really nice. So very, very happy with that. Um, weightlifting has just been great because it's taking care of my joints, my tendons and my ligaments. Um, it'll help me prevent osteoporosis as I get older. Um, you know, all of those things. I just, I can lift things better. Even just a bag of dog food, <laughs> you know, just things like that. It just makes it better and lifting weights isn't gonna make you look like a big bodybuilder um, as a woman you're you're just gonna tone up <laughs> I know that's a very I used to think that that if I lift weights I'm gonna look like some big bodybuilder that maybe that's not the the choice that I want now if that is something that you want to look like that's amazing and I think that's awesome because that is a lot of work and it is very a lot of dedication I think that's amazing but for me I just want to tone up <laughs> so that that is my plan so yeah really really happy with that sorry for that big long tangent but um I'm just really happy <laughs> um another thing that I meant to mention last time and I kind of talked about it and said oh I'll talk about this later and then I never did so in the last episode I think I said something about yarn dyeing and I said don't let me forget to talk about that I'm gonna talk about that and then I didn't um so Ethan got a utility tub for the basement um so my plan is I could do a little bit of yarn dyeing I don't know if I'm gonna be selling it I think I'm just gonna do it for fun um but if I do decide to sell, sell anything like leftovers or whatever, I will definitely let you guys know. Um, but the plan is to more just do it for fun. But I'm, I haven't dyed yarn in over two years, so I'm really excited about it. I'm a little nervous about it, <laughs> which is silly. But um, yeah, we didn't have a utility tub downstairs. We thought it would be good. Um, our gym is down there. So just to, you know, wipe your face down real quick with a nice cool rag, things like that you know, rinse out paintbrushes, whatever. Um, but that's also a great way that I can dye some yarn. So very excited about that. I, my plan is to do it probably in September, or October, as it starts to cool off. Cause I'm probably still just going to do it outside on the, um, camp stoves like I did in the past. Um, but I just, at this point in time, I will say I don't foresee the shop coming back. Um, but so it definitely wouldn't be like large amounts of yarn but I also will say never say never because <laughs> you never know um but that's kind of my thoughts on that so I wanted to let you guys know about that I'm really excited just to start playing with yarn again and dyeing it and just having fun maybe I my plan is to start out with some mini skeins because I have some leftover undyed like broken into skeins from when we did mitten kits and um so I thought that would be a really fun fun thing to do um Another thing was on the 19th was Ella's 10th birthday. My dog, my other dog, Ella. So Benny is our yellow lab. He's the one up here. And Ella is our black lab blue tick coonhound mix. And she turned 10. He'll be 10 soon here too. And um, yeah, oh, it was fun. It was so fun. I was home. It was on my day off. And I took her outside and we played with her favorite ball. But we... <laughs> We don't play with it very much because she is, she literally does not stop barking while she plays it. So she's a little bit of a nuisance outside. 
<laughs> pretty sure it goes against our noise ordinance in the town so <laughs> um so she gets to play with it for like 10 minutes at a time but it really tires her out she loves it it's a big one of the really hard jolly balls there's like a softer jolly ball but there's a big hard plastic one it's huge and she loves it she loves that thing and I think she gets so obsessive with it because she can't pick it up because it's too big and then she just barks at it and hits it and it rolls and it runs and she doesn't I think she thinks it's alive <laughs> so then when it doesn't move she just barks at it and barks at it it's funny um yeah and then the other thing was that I just um, met up with my mom and my aunt last week so oh that was really good um we went to Ann Schutz in um Breckenridge Michigan. I don't know if I said that I'm in Midland, Michigan. Usually I say that at the beginning, but I don't know if I said that. We um, we were going to meet at a park, but then there was so many bees. And if you <laughs> watched last week's or last episode, you'll find out I had my first bee sting. And if I am allergic, um, the next sting could be potentially bad. And I still have not gone to my allergist yet. So, um, I actually am going to see them this week for my allergy shot and then I'm going to talk to them about maybe being tested. So um, it was a little nerve wracking <laughs> trying to stay away from the bees. So um, <laughs> so yeah, so we ended up going to a restaurant. So that was really nice. So something else that I wanted to talk about is my mother-in-law has kind of uh, started a little bit of a, a knit group local here in town. Um, it will start on September 17th. It's a Friday. It'll be Friday nights. And it's going to be held at the Stranded Yarn and Coffee Shop here in Midland, Michigan. So there is um, a Facebook group for it. If any of you guys are local and want to come out, that would be super cool. Um, I'll put a link down here um, in the description box for the group, the Facebook group. I believe it's called Yarnies in Midland, and Yarnies is uh, Y-A-R-N-I-E-S. And um, and it's going to be held at the Stranded Yarn and Coffee Shop here in Midland. I will put a link to their um, website. They also have a Facebook page as well. Um, but the Facebook group will have, um, you know, any updates things like that but it's super casual it's more hey everybody let's show up on Friday nights at stranded and knit or crochet or rug hook embroider any craft is allowed um, but yeah I'm really excited about it I'm looking forward to it I usually work Friday nights so I get out at six so I, I my plan is to just um, go over there sometime after work um, but I think they're open till nine, so it's kind of come and go as you please. Um, super, super casual, like I said. Um, nothing, nothing crazy, and anyone can come and join. So, also, um, she was really encouraging of if people want to learn and they don't know how to knit or crochet and they want to, we've got people there that can help, kind of get you started. Um, so, yeah, super exciting. So. If you are wanting to go that, shoot me a message. Let me know. I'd love to know if, if you're going to be there. So, um, like I said, it's going to be every Friday. You know, I'm assuming holidays and things will change. But um, it's supposed to be every Friday at 6. So, all right. I think that's all I have for you guys. I always feel like I'm missing something or that I've forgotten something when I do this. Um, and I always say, you know what, throughout the week, I'm going to write down notes and I never do. And then I just write it the day, the day of. So usually I do forget something, but I think that's all I have for you guys. I will let you go and, um, yeah, let me know how you guys are doing. I love when you guys leave comments. It's so nice. I'm so sorry. I'm awful at replying to them. I truly want to get better about that because it's so much fun to have that back and forth, to talk with you guys, to get to know you, um, I really love it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me know how you guys are doing, what you're working on. We'll just keep the conversation going. All right, I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye.